Hi, in this lesson, we'll take a look at Bootstrap's grid system. With Bootstrap, you can design responsive layouts. One way to easily create content that adjusts to various screen sizes is to implement Bootstrap's grid system. The Bootstrap grid system allows us to lay out our site content into rows and columns and define how the rows and columns change as the screen size changes. We'll first divide our screen into columns. The Bootstrap grid system is based on 12 columns. No matter the device, no matter the screen width, there are always going to be 12 columns in the Bootstrap grid system. Beginning from the left side of the screen, the columns are numbered from 1 to 12. Now we can add rows to our grid, and we can add as many rows as we want. Using the rows and columns of the grid, we can define sections on a web page. In this example, we have a banner for the first row that extends across all 12 columns. Then we have a left and right panel in the second row that extend across six columns each. And lastly, in the third row, we have an aside that is four columns wide and a section for the site content that is eight columns wide. Bootstrap classes allow us to easily define div elements on the grid. These classes allow us to create content in each row across a number of columns on the grid. But this might be a little too packed for a mobile phone. We might want something like this for a smaller screen. The Bootstrap grid system allows designers to display a different layout for different screen sizes. Shown here are the categories for extra small devices to large devices. There are also classes to address extra large and double extra large devices. Each layout can be defined for a specific device size using the Bootstrap Breakpoint classes. Extra small device layouts are defined with a dot .call for column class. Each class larger than the extra small class adds to the dot .call class with either dash SM for small, dash MD for medium, dash LG for large, or dash XL or dash XXL for extra large and extra extra large devices. When defining the Breakpoint class, we can specify how many columns the div will take up for a specific device size. In this example, we have two divs that, for large devices and up, will each take up six columns. Because there are 12 columns in all, these divs will appear side by side. We don't specify the column size for devices smaller than the large breakpoint, so on medium, small, and extra small devices, these divs will appear stacked, each taking up 12 columns. Here, we've changed the breakpoint from large to medium. This means that for medium-sized devices and larger, the divs will appear side by side, each taking up six columns. On small and extra small devices, however, the divs will still be stacked, each taking up 12 columns. Now we're specifying that for small devices and larger, the divs will appear side by side. Now lastly, we've specified the breakpoint for extra small devices. So here we're saying that for extra small devices and up, so basically any device, the divs will appear side by side, taking up six columns each. We can also add multiple column classes to the same div to specify how it should behave on different screen sizes. Here, the call dash denotes the number of columns for the extra small device. So the first div will take up 12 columns on a mobile device, and the second div will take up six columns on a mobile device. The call dash MD denotes the number of columns on a medium device, such as a desktop. So if viewed on a desktop, the first div will take up eight columns, and the second div will take up four columns. Here, we can see the grid system adjusting from an extra small or mobile breakpoint to a medium screen size breakpoint as the width of the page increases. During the extra small view, the divs are stacked, with the first div taking up the entire 12 columns and the second div taking up 6 columns. Then, as the page width increases to the medium breakpoint, the first div switches to 8 columns in width and the second div becomes 4 columns in width, enabling both divs to appear on the same row. If more than 12 columns are placed within a single row, each group of extra columns will wrap onto a new line. Here's an example where the div elements on a row add up to more than 12 columns. These divs also have background color attributes that use the bootstrap color classes. For example, the primary color is blue and the danger color is red. The first div will take up the entire row because it's 12 columns. The second and third div will be in the second row taking up 5 columns each for a total of 10 columns. When we get to the fourth div, we have to wrap onto a new line because 10 plus 4 is greater than 12, so the entire fourth div is placed on the third row. Now let's head to the editor to continue exploring the bootstrap grid system. Here we are in an empty bootstrap page. Let's see what it looks like to start adding some rows and columns. The first thing we need to do is add a row. To do that, we simply make a div with class row. We already have some styling for the class row in our CSS style sheet. Now this row has 12 columns and I can use these however I want. So let's start by making a single column div. So we'll start by creating a div and give it a class of call 
And then the size, let's do extra small. So we'll just leave the call and we don't need to add a dash SM or dash MD or anything like that. And then let's have it be one column. Great, so now I can see how wide a single column is. Now let's add three divs. Great, so now we have three divs, each one column in width. Now let's go ahead and change how wide each of these divs is. We'll have the first div be three columns wide. The second one be six. So six plus three is nine. So that means we have three columns to work with. So we'll make the third one three. And so now we'll be able to see that these divs extend all the way across the page. So no matter how wide our page is, it's going to extend all the way across the 12 columns. So now what will happen if I make the third div four columns instead of three? Ah, it wraps around and shows up on the next line because nine plus four is 13, which is greater than 12. Okay, so we've played around with one row. Let's make a full on layout with the grid system. On the top, let's add a banner. We want this to extend all the way across the page, no matter the device size. So extra small and above. I'll make a div with the call class call-12 to specify extra small and above, and we want this div to be 12 columns. Great. And we'll add a div with the class spacer after our banner column so that we have some space between our different rows. And we have our styling for the spacer in our CSS style sheet. Now let's make another row. And in this one, we'll have a left panel and a right panel. I want each of them to be six columns so that they're side by side. So I'll add the class of call dash six for each of them to specify extra small and above devices and both should be six columns. And now for our last row, we'll have a small side on the left and then a big section, a big div for content on the right. And let's add another spacer between our panels and our aside and content. All right, so let's make another div with a class row and create a div for the aside and a div for the content. And so we'll make the aside be four columns and the content be eight columns. Now, no matter how big the screen is, this is our layout, right? For our small, medium, and large, we can see that our layout isn't changing at all. But let's say that we want this to be our layout for medium screens and above, but we want it to look slightly different for small and extra small screens. Let's have the left and right panels stack and change the amount of columns for the aside and content for the extra small and small devices. Now we can do this really easily. For the left and right panels, we can add a dash MD to specify that the six columns is for medium and above devices. Now for extra small and small, we want the panels to be 12 so that they stack. So we'll say call for extra small dash 12. This will apply for extra small devices and above. And then the medium breakpoint will take over when the screen extends to medium. Now let's adjust the aside and content divs. For medium screen sizes, we want the aside to be four and the content to be eight. And now let's adjust the column sizes for extra small and small by adding a call breakpoint. Great, so now we can see in the small screen that the left and right panel are stacked and the aside is two columns and the content is 10 columns. However, when we switch to the medium or even the large device screen, we see that the left and right panels are side by side and the aside div extends to four columns and the content div to eight columns. And so now it's your turn to use the Bootstrap grid system to create responsive web pages on your own.